War tears countries apart. It tears families apart. For children caught in the crossfire, coming of age is a fight for life itself. Childhood now, it become a uh, terror every day. Um, our children and our parents, you know, um, hurt, wounded, and killed every day. Nobody trusts anyone. You cannot tell people that you have a brother, and you cannot tell people you have a son. The question is, where is he? And then you end up in torture camp. In the eyes of most Americans, the war in Vietnam had an American face. But the ones who suffered the most, the ones left to pick up the pieces, were the people of Vietnam. More than three million Vietnamese were killed. Landmines and unexploded bombs remain strewn throughout the country. There are at least 140,000 amputees. And despite some progress, Vietnam continues to be one of the poorest nations in the world. There is only one doctor for every 3,000 people. One in three infants is born underweight. Thousands of children have been crippled by diseases like polio because vaccines are not available. I'm lucky enough to be over here in 1970. 1986, I returned to Vietnam. I was shocked. I was totally overwhelming with what happened there that I didn't know after 1975. But rather than let these ghosts of war destroy her country, Lely Hayslip, along with a corps of inspired and dedicated colleagues, set out to rebuild Vietnam brick by brick. And it just touched me so deeply that I have to move and I have to take action to build a bridges between the U.S. and Vietnam. She wanted to give a voice to those millions of people that died in that senseless war. In the course of doing that, she also was able to help heal the wounds of war with veterans, with American veterans who'd spent time there. We're called full circle vets. Those of us that have gone back and done something in Vietnam and, and tried to heal from it. You know, it's a very healing and uplifting experience. With the support and dedication of these partners, Lely first began to rebuild her country through the East Meets West Foundation, which she created in 1988. Initial efforts included trips to Vietnam to deliver vast amounts of medical supplies and equipment to hospitals throughout the country. Then in 1989, Mother's Love Clinic was built in Kila. It was funded by director Oliver Stone and erected by Vietnamese and American veterans working side by side. Uh, the first project was a Mother Love built by uh, three U.S. Vietnam veterans together with uh, Viet Cong, the Vietnamese villagers, and the Communist Party, and funded by Oliver Stone. So that is a first post, I call it a first post to build the bridges between U.S. and Vietnam, between the East and West between enemy and friends. It took an hour or two hours to get to the hospital in those days and to Da Nang. So by building the clinic there, we would have access right away to a primitive, but at least it would be some materials. And I think, what is it, uh, several thousand children have been born there. So that's great, and I hope uh, it lasts. In 1992, the Peace Village Medical Clinic in China Beach became another post in Lei Li's Bridge. And in the following year, the Village of Hope Children's Center was created to serve at-risk children in central Vietnam. Here, children receive health care, attend school, learn English, and participate in vocational training. My mom died when I was seven, and my dad died before I don't know. And so I went there because we don't have enough money to go to school, and we don't have enough money to have the good meals. Through the work of the foundation, Hai and Tem were adopted by an American couple and now enjoy more promising lives. But while the foundation charged forward, its work remained generally unnoticed until Lely's personal story was illuminated on film by Oscar-winning director Oliver Stone. Who she became fascinates her, so she explores it in two books, which are amazingly solid stories, good stories because it's a dramatic life where she was, you know, she was for example, on both sides of the war. She was both VC and she was uh, taught the American way. So she was, and then in America, she was divided equally. She thought it was, an, she thought America Act Three would be the end of the story, but it wasn't. So I worked very hard, but then when the books come out in 1989, I thought they get easier, but no, nobody really cared. So when did Oliver come in? 
and uh, help with the funding to build the Mother Love Clinic. Uh, absent the uh, book for the movie, that is when things start to bright up. Lely left East Meets West in 1998, and the following year set up the Global Village Foundation. Its goal is to end cycles of poverty, illiteracy, and hopelessness, while still valuing and preserving the rich Vietnamese heritage. Because there has been in recent years much progress made in urban areas, the Global Village Foundation concentrates its work in the rural villages. You come from the city and you, and you drive to a place two hours away and you're in a completely different world. People out there, they need everything from clean water to health care to education. They, they need the whole package. Global Village funds the building of schools, markets, centers for the blind, cultural and vocational training centers, and medical and dental clinics. A new project for the foundation provides schools with books and other education materials through a mobile library program. And so Global Village Foundation not only builds the schools, but also supplies with the books for children to read. And if the children cannot come to school twice a day, at least they still can have book to read when they have free time. In January of this year, Lely and members of Global Village Foundation took more supplies to Vietnam and visited some of these projects. When I go into a, these villages, we form a bond with them over the time when we first arrive into their village uh, and meet with them and until the time that uh, we have the grand opening ceremony and, and we become friends and, and we work together. It's not just, uh, okay, go build it and leave. You know, we. Uh, we like to come back, and if it's a school, we you know, bring gifts for the children. We paint murals on the walls, and, and to make it a place that they want to come to school. You know, we put a playground in. We make them comfortable and, and happy. This trip, first we have a grand opening uh, school that we built this morning. And uh, this afternoon, the group of dentists uh, from Oregon uh, came to work on the children's teeth. And this is just emergency work. We're just taking care of a lot of the things that we're letting go are bad problems. You know, back home, you'd be doing pulpotomies and stainless steel crowns on them. Basically, what we're doing is taking teeth out that are either abscessed or will definitely abscess before they would come out on their own. And the other major problems we're just letting them go. Our object for the future is to prevent this. We've got to stop this problem from happening. When I go into a, these villages out in the countryside here, I see houses that aren't houses. There's not even any walls. It's just like a thatched house. This is a one of the houses that Global Village Foundation built. So here's how it used to look like that little one right there and that is a family of husband and wife and two children. If you're at a house that you built for a family and you see, you see the look in their eyes and you see how it affects them and their whole family, and that's the payoff. I, I, I used to cry all the time when I come here and it really, really rain me and really burn me out. But then I just say, you know, but I sleep good. One night rest, next morning I start all over again. Perhaps more than any other, Lei Li has given a face, a voice, and hope for the future to the victims of the Vietnam War. To have your life threatened, uh, to have your books banned, uh, to have people look down on you and still not lose sight of your, your focus, I think is just a wonderful inspiration for, any, for kids today. Lei Li Hayslip's tireless efforts demonstrate the profound impact one person can have on our planet through people like Lee and, and the foundation, um, that we can truly build those bridges uh, and to, to uh, make a difference in this world. You'd rather live in peace and not war, right? You'd rather live in happiness than not sadness. You'd rather love and hate. You'd rather have compassion than have an enemy. I mean, it's all that good thing, why not? Not have nothing to lose, everything to win. That is what I'm trying to do.